Good afternoon, Mr. Rocco, and welcome to Tucson. Glad to be here. Thank you. So, um, what do you enjoy about being an author and an illustrator? Ah, um, well, there's something to being an author and an illustrator where you have a lot of control over what you're creating. Mm -hmm. So, you can easily interchange words for pictures or pictures for words. Mm -hmm. So, if you want less words in your book, then you just draw a little bit more because you never want to repeat the same thing. Um, a lot of times when I'm illustrating someone else's text, I don't have that same control. So I, you know, tend to just be stuck with the drawing part. Whereas when I'm drawing and writing, I can, I can control both of them. How did you come about your partnership with Rick Ward in illustrating these books? Well, a lot of times um, it's originally established with the publisher. So the publisher will contact me and say, we have this book, we think you would make a great cover for it. And then I think it was after the third book, The Titan's Curse, is when I actually met Rick. And now we have much more of a collaborative relationship, so he'll be working on a book. Sometimes he doesn't have the whole thing written, but they need me to start working on the ideas for the cover. So he'll tell me the stories and, and I'll say, no, wait, go back, tell me what happens in that scene. And, and it's a lot of fun, so we've gotten together quite a few times to just discuss what should be on the cover, what might make a good cover, and that's been, that's been pretty great, because you don't normally get that relationship. How did you think of the story Stone That Rock? Was it fiction, or did something actually happen? Ah, uh, well, I would say that the characters are very much based on people we knew. Um, Jake, the main character, is sort of based on a little bit on my life, um, loosely though. Uh, and, you know, both me and Jay grew up working on shellfishing boats. So he actually started working on a lobster boat when he was 11, and I started working on a, a commercial shellfishing boat when I was 11. And then when I was, so that time when I was working, I was working on his boat. He was the captain of the boat I worked on. So we've been friends for like 30 years, 35 years now. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's how we met. Was that your question? I'm sorry. I don't even know if I answered your question. Yeah, hey, okay, good. Um, how has technology changed the way that you have um, written, created, and illustrated your books? Okay, so the way technology has changed the way I approach books um, is, you know, all the technology I use today is okay. the same technology I used on my, the first book that I wrote and illustrated. Okay. Um, so I, I don't necessarily use newfangled fancy software or anything. I pretty much I use Photoshop to, to color my black and white pencil drawings. Um, but many, many years ago I did a picture book where I didn't know how to use a computer. Um, so I did it traditionally. And so that, that's been a big change. And it allows me to work faster, I would say. And I'm able to try a lot more things that I wouldn't be able to do traditionally. Like paint something over. If suddenly, like originally the cover for this Percy Jackson Greek Gods I had done is more of a purple color. And they said, oh no, we can't have it purple. Um, and so I was e easily able to adapt the palette without having to redo the whole painting. So that, that made a big difference for me. How did you come up with the ideas for the drawings in Percy Jackson's Greek Gods? In Greek Gods? Um, well, the, you know, they're all based on real myths. Um, so there's a lot of imagery out there about the different myths. Um, the Greek mythology is, is well documented over centuries of art, from, from early sculptures to paintings to other illustrations that people are doing today. And what I tried to do was to kind of look at all of it. I went to a lot of museums to look at some of the original reliefs and some of the paintings, the vase paintings and, and things, and, and to get ideas. And I also wanted to sometimes illustrate scenes that hadn't been done a million times. Like I'm sure there's 10 million paintings of Perseus cutting off Medusa's head. 
I just didn't want to do that because it's been done so many times. So I wanted to try to illustrate some of the scenes that hadn't been illustrated before. I hope I did a good job. <laughs> I mean, if you guys like it, I'm happy. So that's good. How old were you when you started illustrating books? Well, um, the first book I illustrated, I was 22. And then I stopped, I, I went off and became an art director for about 14 years before I did another book. So I'm gonna let you do the math. <laughs> but I've been working as a children's book author illustrator for the, te the last 10 years. Yeah, and before that I worked on uh, movies and theme parks and different things like that. What do you think influenced you to become an illustrator and a writer? What influenced me to become an illustrator was that uh, I was living with an illustrator when I went to college. And I didn't even know people made stuff like this. I mean, I, I thought it all came, I didn't think about it, you know, it was like some factory in the sky. And he would sit there in his room and he would paint pictures all day and he, and he would get a check. And I thought, this is the greatest job in the world, how do I do that? I want to paint pictures. So I studied sort of under him and figured out how to become an illustrator. And then when the writing bit came about was that I was asked to illustrate a book based uh, on the story of The Boy Who Cried Wolf. And I didn't really like the story. And, but I still wanted to illustrate the book because it was a, a job that I wanted. And so I took some writing courses and I started to develop my own story and my own technique on how to develop a story that way and I've been writing stories ever since. I've always been a storyteller but mm -hmm. a lot of it's been from the visual side and I'm still learning how to write better you know we, we can always get better mm -hmm. and so I spend a lot of time just honing that muscle or you know practicing using that muscle. Was English a good subject for you and what other classes did you enjoy? <laughs> No, English. I was horrible in English. Um, I was really good with math, math, science. My dad's a scientist, so math was like it came easy to me, and that's why I, when I first went to college, I went to study engineering. Um, but then I I took to drawing, and I really enjoyed it, and I, I enjoyed the craft of it. There's something about that process that really stimulated me. So. Um, I've kind of left the math and science behind quite a bit, but I enjoy what I do, so I think that's what matters at the end of the day, right? You gotta love what you do. How was it working with Jay and Swim Network? Oh, it, for me it was great, and I think for him it was great too. As I said, Jay and I, uh, who co-wrote Swim That Rock, we have been friends since I was 11 years old, and he had always wanted to write a book. And I had been working on books with publishers, and I said, let's, let's try writing a book together. And so we would get together, and you know, we lived very far apart, so just having that time to get together. And, and you guys will know, you're going to have friends that last a really long time. It might not be a bunch of friends, it might just be one friend, but when you have that one person that has known you since you were a little kid, it's a much deeper relationship, you know? And so for, for us, it was really special to be able to do something that we both wanted to do, but was scary at the same time. To write a novel is just pretty daunting, you know? Like, how am I gonna write 300 pages of something and have it make sense? It's kind of hard to imagine. So it took us five years uh, to really figure out what we were doing. <laughs> Was it always so easy working with him? It was easy working with him, yeah, because we were both very open to each other's ideas and, and each other's strengths. Like, he was really good at writing action scenes, where I was really good at writing, like, characters, emotions, and, and things like that. And, and so the balance between the two really worked out because, you know, he could write the action scene and I could come in and, and add something to it and vice versa. Um, so that that was good, and we never got into too many conflicts about what we were gonna write. What advice do you have for young people interested in having a career like yours? 
my advice to to anybody who wants to go into children's books writing illustrating is is do do exactly what you love to do um, there's going to be a lot of people and influences along the way but you always have to come back to you know what you get excited about doing do you guys draw right some of you yeah, okay so if there's something that you write or draw and you're like oh I love drawing robots or whatever it is that's if that's the thing you love to do you got to stick stay true to that I mean somewhere along the line you're gonna have to maybe draw something you don't want to draw just to make a living at it but if you really stay true to that thing that, that, that gets you excited, you know, that like you draw something, you write something, and you can't wait to go back and look at it and see how can I improve this? That's that's what you gotta stay true to. And and if you stay on that course and then, then you can do the things you love to do. Do you have any other stories or illustrations you have in mind in the future? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean I I usually keep a folder in my computer filled with ideas for stories that I want to tell. Some of them really stink and so they never come out of that folder. And then some of them, like, I'll look at it a year later and I'll say, oh, that's not a bad idea. Or I'll have another idea to make it better. And so I'll constantly go back to it and, and try to find that good idea that'll be the next book. I'm in that process right now, actually, with about two or three different books that I don't know which one's gonna be next. Whichever one's bugging me the most. Is there anything else that you would like people to know about you? Well, I really enjoy meeting people like you because you're the people that read the books and that's kind of great fun for me because I sit in my studio all day by myself, drawing, 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 and you never know if it's good and you just kind of like hope it's good and hope people like it and then you come to a festival like this one um, in Tucson and you get to meet people like yourselves and other people who come to hear you talk and and it's really rewarding and you feel so energized about going back to the studio and like I gotta make another good book for these people you know and, and you make it for yourself too but that it's knowing that there's readers out there who are looking at your books that's really satisfying. Do you come to a lot of festivals? I probably do three four festivals a year I would think and then I visit a lot of schools, um, so I get out of the studio often, often enough. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us, Mr. Rocco. Um, this concludes our interview. Thank you so much.